Hey guys, this is going to be a little UV unwrapping masterclass. I know I've already made one in the past, but I just really love unwrapping and I think a lot of people um, get value from these types of videos. So hopefully you can just observe my workflow, see how I work, see how I unwrap and just kind of get the general idea behind the entire process. This won't necessarily be a tutorial. This will be more so me just um, working really so nothing crazy but the idea here is i'm just going to kind of chat have a conversation with you guys we'll have a good time and um hopefully you can just kind of observe what i do and kind of get some ideas for how you can make the same approach for your model so all i'm doing here is adding in a uh, checker texture so that way i can preview it and then i can select everything and copy that to the rest so now we kind of have like a base material to work off of and what I love about hard surface modeling is that when you do UV unwrapping, it is arguably the easiest process on hard surface models. On organics, it is a lot more difficult because you don't, you can't really automate the process with the sharp edges and whatnot. So that's kind of the nice thing about, I'm um, going to right click mark seam. That's kind of the nice thing about hard surface models is most of the process can uh, kind of be automated. Now, the goal here isn't to you know, teach you every little bit. I have plenty of tutorials on that. We also have a new course, um, but I just kind of want to show you my, um, just my workflow. You can observe how I do it, study, do all that type of stuff. Um, and hopefully it'll kind of make sense to you. And I'm going to explain things along the way as I do them, because there are some ideas that I think are at least worth mentioning because they're not super obvious. So um, right here, whenever you have um, like circular areas, you always want to put at least one seam down the center. And also, we kind of have some weird like whatever this is. So that probably means the unwrap is not set to conformal. Conformal almost always fixes those situations, so pretty easy. Um, let's see. I'm going to put a seam. So this is symmetrical, is it? I think it's symmetrical. Yeah, it is. Cool. So I can just go ahead and... Oops, I'm going to try the other side. Save a little bit of time. Got some chamfer seams here on the bottom. And um, we can just dissolve some of that stuff out. Now, this is kind of an interesting situation because this is actually a piece that's a little bit more ang angular around the side here. So if I were to set this to angle-based, you might actually get a little bit of a cleaner result in some cases, but maybe not here. Um, anyways, what I want to do is put just at least one seam on this side to just avoid the ring. Um, so if you were to go into here and just kind of take a look at this area, um, we're going to kind of have like a ring formation going around the center. So let me select it, zoom in. So just by putting like a seam down here in the middle somewhere, right down to that point, it just kind of makes it a little bit more straightened out, a little bit cleaner to work with. So overall, it's just going to give us a much better result. Um, go ahead and remove that edge on the top don't really need it I guess we could leave it doesn't matter too much I also notice we actually have a mirror modifier here which is why we kind of have like this butterfly effect in the center so let me just apply that mirror modifier and just boom hit it with an unwrap should be good to go um, no seams needed here because that one's pretty continuous which is nice yeah not too bad you can test the angle based again and conformal it's not too bad. Cool. So that one's done. I mean, this process is really straightforward. I mean, you just go in here, you select the sharp edges, you right click, and then you mark the seam. That's it. And then sometimes you might have to kind of like automate the process a little bit more. Um, there's four main situations you have to be careful of. Uh, it's continuous sets of faces for one, chamfer seams, uh, sneaky edge markings, and rings as I call them. I have a video discussing all four, which I'll, uh, I'll link in the description, and hopefully my editor puts that on the screen right here, um, a link to that video. It's really, really useful and should um, be quite useful to you. Actually, these pieces right here, just to kind of optimize a little bit more UV space, um, what I could do, we already have a mirror modifier on this side. Technically, I could add another one over here using an array to make it even more non-destructive, but um, when I'm trying to mirror my UVs, I tend to only do it on areas where you can't see both sides at once, and this would actually be one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one alone. We'll hide it and just keep working on these. 
Some of these pieces are really easy. Some of them you don't have to do too much work on, while other ones you do have to do quite a bit of work on. So we have another ring right here. So I'll just put a seam here on the bottom just to kind of break that ring up. And we have a mirror modifier, which is why we have that butterfly effect. Just apply that and then unwrap it. Get a pretty decent result. I also see um, a lot of people tend to worry about like the texel density early on and like the different size checkers and whatnot. Um, it doesn't matter because you're going to be unwrapping everything together at once at the end. So the only goal right now is to get a clean unwrap. So don't get confused as to like or worried about, you know, checkers being different sizes because all of that will kind of get dealt with at the end. So let's clear that out. I'm not sure why that happened. Okay, that's a pretty clean unwrap. Cool. I go through here. Um, pretty much every cylinder is by default a ring, as you can see. Um, actually, that one's quite straight. Let me unwrap this. Um, but what is this? First, let's mark our sharp edges. Do that first. And then as you can see right here, we have a ring. So maybe we'll just destroy that ring on the bottom here. And most of these are continuous sets of faces, meaning that we can pretty much remove a good portion of these seams right here. Just kind of make the overall result a bit cleaner. It's very easy to kind of like go overboard when you don't need to. Um, and that's fine, but if you're wasting too much time on areas you're never going to see, it's uh, quite frankly not, not worth your time. So I wouldn't stress about it. Um, let me just actually do that. Symmetrize and unwrap. And what happened through here? Okay, that angle base would actually work better, not instead of conformal. So what I might actually do, let me just put a seam right there. Could put a seam in there. Clear this one out, just kind of see how that result is. Um, if that doesn't want to work with us very well, I'm actually just going to use an angle based unwrap for this one here. Or what I could even do is just Let's not continue that edge all the way over. Let's just use a conformal and set it up like that. Um, although we have a ring here, it's actually not too bad, but I still would rather avoid that situation if possible. So let me, yeah, I'll just use angle base for right now because it's a more angular type of um, mesh. And these can all these um, little islands here can always be straightened out at the end. So. This one here should be quite easy. Select the sharp edges. That one just an easy seam marking and then just drop an edge down here, call it a day. And we could probably remove like one of these seams. Yeah, I'm not gonna stress too much about that, but it is possible. Cool. And this is actually a piece I think we could mirror. So instead of, you know, unwrapping onto two separate areas, you know, one, two, right um, what we could actually do is delete that one out and then drop a mirror modifier on that side and now we're just going to kind of have overlapping UVs from the mirror modifier pretty cool so I have these um buyer dynamic um, headphones they're really really good like a $600 pair of headphones and I, uh, I've never really been like a, a big audio guy, but Ryu convinced me to get them a while back and I've just been using them a ton recently. I have a DAC that they're connected to and I listen to a lot of ambient music and I tell you, ambient music is absolutely amazing on these things. It sounds so good, especially when you have a, um, um, a DAC. I have, I think it's called Shit Asgard. I'm looking at it. That's actually the name of the company. It's kind of funny, um, but it's not shit. It's actually very... Very good, very good audio. And now when I'm recording, I just kind of have some ambient music playing in the background and it just makes life a lot easier to record, kind of more mellow, enjoyable. Um, I don't know if you guys are into ambient music, but it's really just like, um, ambient music just like, I guess instrumentals, just very like chill instrumentals is the best way to put it. Um, and I have quite a few... Uh, Quite a few ambient artists I like. Um, I'll kind of mention some of them because I'm sure some of you guys enjoy ambient as well. Um, one of my favorites is Solar Fields. I love Solar Fields. Really good stuff. Um, although that's not like pure ambient compared to the type I listen to. Um, there's some other artists I like. There's Law School. 
Um, AES Dana is really good. Some really good tracks. Um, MicTech's good. Most of these you probably haven't heard of unless you're really into ambient music. Um, who else? There's quite a few other names that are just a little bit interesting. I found a new artist just the other day called How to Disappear Completely. Really, really good ambient music, but kind of like some of it's kind of dark, and I don't really like that. Um, it just kind of depends on the album, but he has really good stuff as well. Um, some of it is kind of creepy, though, so I'm staying away from those tracks. Um, this one needs to be conformal. But yeah, I'm just kind of recording, and you can't hear it because I have the headset on, but it's just really easy to record, just easy to chat and kind of, you know, work on the models and whatnot and have a good time. So let's go through here. Clear seam. Mark a seam there. I'm only focusing on one side here because I can't see, or um, I can just symmetrize the other side, right? Okay, this looks pretty good. Let me see if I can remove, I don't think so. But I just, I'm just kind of curious how that'll look. Yeah, it's gonna kind of skew a little bit too much, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but anyways, what I will do is symmetrize, dissolve out the symmetrized edge right here that we don't need. Then just unwrap it again. Looks pretty good. Hide that. And same idea for this one. We'll just select the sharp edges. Also, um, I should have mentioned, if you're using hard ops, you can just go to the control tilde menu, tick on seam, and... Um, that's really all you need. I'll just remove these. Tick on seam, sharpen, and it does it for you. The only thing I've noticed is that live unwrap does not work with this feature. No idea why, but not a huge deal, I guess. We'll do that. Symmetrize. Mark a seam. We'll just do an angular based unwrap. I'm not going to go too crazy on this one because there's just no need. Okay. Where are these? Where are these corresponding to? That edge should go through the middle. Okay, cool. So that should be able to be straightened out later. Awesome. We'll discuss all that in this video as well, or I'll show it at least. So let's sharpen, unwrap. I'm not going to stress too much about that one. It's not a really big piece. So sharpen. You can unwrap this one. And this is basically the same piece as the other one. It's a little bit of a different style. Um, this connection point is quite awful though, so especially if this were like a game asset, I might want to have a little bit more of a perpendicular um, connection point. So what I could always do is hop into box cutter, use an N-Gon cutter set to knife, and then just kind of like do something like this. And then you can just dissolve these out and have a much nicer connection point. And the triangulations will be a bit more assisted that way as well, which is pretty cool. Can get rid of that. Cool. Can get rid of these random little extra marks. This wasn't meant to be a game asset originally, so it's not as clean as it could have been. And I'm not really planning to make this into a game asset, so not super optimized or decimated down, but the concepts still definitely apply. For unwrapping at least. Let's go in here. Can clear that out. Clear seam. Clear seam. Gotta be careful of the chamfered markings because on chamfers there's never a need to have like, you know, double the seam marking. It's just redundant. So I always remove at least one. Usually in the less uh, less uh, obvious area, I like to leave the seam on the planar portion. I can put the seam there to keep that straight. Oh, I almost forgot this one. Cool. I don't know what the heck happened here, so let's just clear that out. Make sure that's marked. Hit that with a quick symmetry, and let's make sure we're on conformal because this is a more hard surface type of design right here. OK, 
Okay, so that should be the entire chamfer. And then right here should be easy, just boom, hit that with a hit that with a seam. This is just very hard to kind of see. Actually, no, the seam needs to go down here instead, because that continues down more. So I guess we don't need one right here then. Let's see, let's press the L key. That one's kind of a mess, isn't it? Let me zoom in up here. Uh, let me go ahead and remove this chamfer seam. Let's run clean mesh. There we go. Because something about this little portion um, Blender is not happy with. Hmm. I think there's just some missing faces. I don't know why. I don't know what you did to this mesh. <laughs> we'll just fill that in. There we go, much better. Probably just some weird mistake. Which is gonna happen, you have to know how to fix it, and that's why I kinda wanna show it in this video. Because you're always gonna run into mistakes and you should just be able to like immediately know, okay, that's the issue, I know how to fix it. Because that's where most people get stuck, I've noticed, is that they know all the tutorials, they follow all the tutorials, know all the tools, but then when they run into their own issue, they can't diagnose it because they don't know the back end fundamentals. So I tend to like to show that in my videos just to kind of make things a little bit more obvious. Um, let's go in here. Actually, I'm just going to sharpen the whole thing. So this should be easy. These ones I'm not too concerned about making the perfect seams because they're just very small areas. This one, however, we have way too many redundant seams going on. So for most of this, just boom, knock that out. And there's still some redundant seams, but I'm not too worried about it. Gonna unwrap that, conformal, do angle base for right now. Just wanna get the unwrap looking good. This one's easy. This is just going to be a basic marking on the faces. Have to be in edge mode. And then got to avoid the ring here on the bottom because we have skewing. So just control E, mark seam, good to go. I just noticed I might need to move my screencast keys over a little bit. Where's the panel? I don't know what the hell is happening. <laughs> Anyways, let's go over here, unwrap this one. That one's nice and continuous, makes life a bit easier. And this is symmetrical, so I only need to focus on one side because then I can just run a symmetry. So let's do a marking there and there. Clear that one, symmetrize, dissolve out that middle edge, and then unwrap, on conformal that is. And we do have a big ring here on the bottom, see that, it's a really massive ring, so um, let's see. The best spot to put that seam would probably be right in here, because we can't see these edges. So that's perfect. That one looks good. Um, these aren't instance or anything. So I'll just do the same thing on this one. Sharpen, unwrap, do a quick removal here. A quick removal of our good old chamfer seams. And then just a quick marking here on the top. Removal here on the top and marking here to avoid the ring. Oh, and let's also symmetrize it, of course. And there we go, looks good. So pretty easy, those weren't too difficult. So we're actually probably about halfway done. This looks like a lot of pieces, but it's actually not too many. Um, situations like this can actually be quite tricky. Let me kind of move this back a little bit. Um, so let's go to, let's sharpen it. Um, the issue with this is there's no, there's not really any sharp edges on here except on the sides. And actually not even because this is a mirror. 
And once we apply that mirror, the only sharp edges exist on the back, as you can see. And the reason for that is because we have some like higher segmented bevels right here, which aren't technically in that um, 30 degree sharpness threshold. So in this case, what you have to do is imagine these were sharp edges. And once you can imagine they were, you would immediately know kind of where to place those seams. You can just kind of pretend there was no bevel here, pretend this was a purely sharp edge. And then once you, you know, drop the seam here, let me also clean this mesh. Once you drop the seam there and then do a nice symmetry, you'll get a much better result. Actually, not quite. Um, so what we're going to have to make sure we do is let's put one in here maybe. Symmetrize it over. And then we're going to have a ring on the inside, as you can see. And to avoid the ring, we just do this. Just split the ring like a, you know, ring of paper. You just cut it with scissors, right? Same idea with UVs. Uh, adding a seam is the same as cutting a paper ring with scissors. That's kind of the analogy I give. So this one, um, let's see how angle base looks. It's actually a little bit more, that's yeah, not too much of a difference, is it? And uh, one thing I do want to mention is that, um, what was I about to say? Smart UV project, a lot of people swear by this tool. Smart UV Project is good for testing. I don't use it for anything else. I used to use it all the time when I was a lot more inexperienced, but I've come to realize that Smart UV Project just gives you subpar results. Um, in this case, actually not too bad, except like down here, there's just seams all over the place, a mess. Um, I don't use Smart UV Project unless I'm simply testing. Maybe I just want to quickly texture something, or I use like a grungy texture, it might be okay, but I always like to do manual seams. It's just always um, a lot cleaner, more professional looking. Okay, these are easy. Um, fortunately, we have a mirror, so we can kind of just um, mirror that and good to go. Let's go ahead and mark seam. Do that one. Unwrap and then maybe Do something like this. There should be a seam down there in the middle, right? Yep. And then we have a chamfer seam here, here, and here. Clear that out. Good to go. And like I said, guys, you always want to make sure you put the seams in areas you're not going to really see it. That should be obvious enough if you've done UVs before, but um, there's almost always going to be an area you see less than the others. Um, you know, you kind of have to figure that out analytically, like which area am I less likely to see? Most likely that would probably be the inside, so maybe I could have, you know, I guess I can't undo to that point, but maybe, you know, instead of putting the seam here, I could have perhaps um, put it like here. Like that. Just kind of a, you know, personal choice. Um, I did not mean to reveal all that stuff. There we go. I think I just undid it again, but <laughs> I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, these pieces should be nice and easy. Now, we don't. We can overlap the UVs over here. As a matter of fact, we could overlap the UVs on all four of these. Um, just because these are smaller pieces, you won't really see the repeated texture even if they're on the same side. But usually what I do is I only mirror the pieces that are on opposite sides that you can't really see. And I guess we already have a mirror here, but they were like duplicated for some weird reason. I don't know. Um, let's do that. Clear that seam. Do a quick unwrap. We'll do conformal. Looks good. Yeah, generally angle based, um, it's like the only thing you'll use if you're doing organics, but for more hard surface pieces, it's almost always going to be conformal, unless it's like a more hybrid type of mesh, which are definitely um, very common. All right, let's see. I could put the seam here in the back. Yeah, that's cool. Got a small chamfer seam down here. Not really a big deal if I left it, but because we can't see it, but just going to be clean, I guess. Did I do these ones already? I did not, but they're actually pretty clean. It's interesting. Mark a seam. And we already have a mirror modifier to overlap, so that'll be quite useful. 
And like I said, guys, I'm not really optimizing this mesh. Um, if I was optimizing it and decimating things down, I'd be focusing more on like the bevel segment count, the poly count, removing faces I can't see and things like that. But um, just for the sake of this video, I am not doing that. Looks like we have a solidify modifier. Now, if you have solidify modifiers, you're definitely going to want to apply those. So that way the mesh is, um, you know, fully manifold, three dimensional. And then... Um, I'm actually just going to remove these booleans, or I could keep them. I think they look cool, so I'm just going to keep them, apply them. Otherwise, I would probably bake those, even though they go through, it might still bake okay because they're so small. I would have to actually experiment with that, but... Actually, let's first sharpen it, and then unwrap, make it a little bit easier to see. I'm not going to worry too much about all those seams, should be fine. And mark that. And I'm going to have to put another seam through the middle here as well. All the way down. And then a quick um, marking on that one. And we'll just call it a day on this piece. Easy enough. Okay, let's go ahead and sharpen this and then do a quick um, quick unwrap. Can clear that one out and then clear that one out too. And then we have a very small chamfer seam down here. We can clear that one out. And then just like we did on the other one, um, which one are we less likely to see? Probably the front, honestly, so we could just like remove the ring there, and then for this one, could just clear that out. And I don't let me resharpen that. Okay, I think we have some duplicate verts going on here, so. We'll just do something like that. Not sure exactly what happened here, but I can just drop in a loop there and then join these up and then control X those out, fix up these seams. And um, just to make sure this follows the curvature a bit cleaner, I'll just kind of pull that in. There we go. And then all we have to do is clean out these little um, chamfers, drop in a seam to clean that up, and then let symmetry take care of the rest. Cool. All right, and then we also have this here. I thought I already got this one taken care of. Maybe I undid something by accident. Not a big deal. Um, let's go ahead, control click around like that. And then since we have our very annoying ring right here, all we got to do is this. There we go, much cleaner. And let's not forget about our champ for seam here on the top. And then just make sure. Yeah, if you ever do that, if you ever clear out a champ for seam and it goes crazy again, you probably just have to make sure you connect up that because that one's kind of sneaking through. Mark that one up and you'll be good to go. Cool, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. This one's quite large, so this one should be easy. We'll just sharpen it. I guess I changed my settings when I restarted Blender off camera. We'll just do that, do a quick unwrap. Um, just going to take care of the most obvious chamfer seams here. Clear those out. Clear this one out. And then I guess I could put my seam like right here. Yeah, it'll be fine. It just depends. Like, that's the back, so I guess that would be the best spot, right? Just do something quick like that. Not going to worry too much about the overall look here. Then we'll just do a quick angle based unwrap like that. A little bit cleaner. And call it a day. Cool. So, not too much left here. Um, this one should be quite easy because all I have to do is sharpen it. And then all we're really going to have left are these chamfer seams right here. Um, let me also, for 
for some reason I thought the scale wasn't applied, but I think we're good. I think the entire thing had the scale applied beforehand. Because, I mean, by default with hard ops and you're running bevels and whatnot, it's going to apply the scale. So I don't even have to worry about that anymore. Um, let's go to this one. I think some of these are instances or just um, mirrored. So I'm not going to worry. I think these are all mirrored here. Yeah. So that'll be nice because that'll kind of overlap some of the UVs. Don't have to stress too much about those. Going to clear that one. Just give it a good old second unwrap. And then one of these, these are all instances except for this one here. So this one should be quite easy to sharpen. Oh, I forgot to change this back to conformal. Not a big deal because we're going to be unwrapping it again at the end anyways. Um... Let me apply this mirror. It's kind of weird. Actually, we have this bevel. I don't know what the heck this is corresponding to. Interesting. Just going to go ahead and apply that bevel and then apply that mirror. Cool. And then we can go ahead and maybe clear that one. And then. clear out these chamfer seams and then also these ones here. It's going to be kind of hard to symmetrize this one so I'm not going to bother. I have to set up like a local orientation and just do some annoying stuff so we'll just clear out this part a little bit more manually. Cool. Let's isolate it. Alright, everything looks good except for this is a little bit rotated, nothing that a, you know, you can just do something like that, but uh, I think that'll be fine. If you wanted to make it a little bit cleaner, I guess you could try, let's just see if that's any better. It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit better. I could just put it down the center, I guess. This one isn't a super obvious piece, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. And then this little isolated area looks good. So we have that. Well, these are all instances, so I guess all these get hidden, right? And then this right here. Really easy, just, I guess, um, one chamfer seam. And then all we need is like a extra set here in the back to avoid the ring. And then here, just um, we'll clear these out. And then do something like this. Cool. And then, um, not going to worry too much about that one really small piece. Cool. So that entire thing is now complete. So let me Alt H to unhide everything. Get rid of that backdrop. Now you're going to see, like, overall, this, this entire piece has a um, pretty clean set of UVs. Now, the only difference is all the checkers are different sizes. We don't want that. We want one uniform size, one uniform texel density, right? This is why I say don't worry about the checker size early on when you're still unwrapping everything. It doesn't matter because at the end, we're going to deal with that. But for right now, what I want to do is I want to figure out what pieces I can kind of um, automate meaning I can you know add a, add a modifier that kind of allows us to um, double our UV space. So uh, for example, right here, we have a mirror modifier. This is mirroring this pipe over to this side, right? And what this is doing, let me show you. Let me pull out the UV editor. What this mirror modifier is doing, since it's not live, or um, I'm sorry, since it's not applied, since it's a live mirror modifier, is what's happening behind the scenes is all these UVs on this one are getting overlapped with this one because this one technically doesn't exist. If I were to apply the mirror modifier, as long as I don't re-unwrap everything, check this out, these UVs are completely overlapped and this is going to save a lot of space, especially on these more symmetrical pieces with no center. So that's kind of what I want to do here. I want to make sure all these little symmetrical pieces have a mirror modifier just to kind of save some of that space. Most of these actually do, so shout out to Ryu, got me a pretty good uh, setup here. There are some additional techniques you could use that are a little bit more advanced. I don't want to go too far into that in this video, um, but there's some little tricks I use, like slicing out the center and then mirroring the sides to kind of imitate like um, 
like one of those symmetrical pieces without a middle. That gets a little bit more advanced, and I also realized I... Did I get these? Yeah, I did. Cool. But yeah, I just want to go in here and maybe... I guess these could be the same because they're so small. So what I'm going to do instead is, let's see. I'm going to go in here and delete that one out. And what I can do is I can run an additional mirror to that side. So now we literally only have one reference here. And all the UVs and these little bolts over here are getting nice and overlapped. So uh, pretty useful stuff there. Yeah, let's go in. I also noticed a slight shading issue right here. I think let's turn hard and normals on. There we go. Okay, let's see what else. We have those instance pieces. Everything looks good. Um, this looks good. Not too much left, I think we could really do here. I mean, maybe there is, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. We mostly have um, these pieces kind of, um, let's see, can I do it for this one too? A little bit biased, I'm not going to worry about that. Alright, so once you're done with the entire unwrap and, you know, looks clean, what you need to do is you need to select everything, tab into edit mode, select everything again, and then we're going to go ahead and unwrap it, right? And uh, it says object has non-uniform scale. In that case, what we can do is control A, apply scale, give it an unwrap. And this one's set to conformal, so um, in these situations, like over here, it's actually not a huge problem. Let me show you, because what's happening with the conformal on these more angular pieces is they kind of get like this um, Fibonacci looking like spiral thing. But what we can actually do is use the UV squares add-on and two grid by shape will straighten that out very nicely. And that's like generally what I do is I go look for all these pieces that have that are like strips of quads, otherwise this add-on won't work. So um, I basically go to all those and I straighten them out. Now sometimes you run into situations like this where these are easily quadrifiable but they're not connected. See that? So this is technically one big end gone. So what I do in these cases, pretty easy. Um, on these pieces, I know I can straighten them out, but it's not going to work if it's um, if it's an n-gon. You're just going to see it like flattens. I don't want that. What I want to do instead is just um, make sure this is turned on, press the L key, and then period key to zoom in here and figure out where that is. And it looks like it's all these pieces right here. So what I'm actually going to do is just take all this area, and then all this bottom area. And since these have a nice one-to-one -one correspondence between the vertices, one, 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 right? It's not like there's two right here to connect to one. Um, what we're gonna do is actually do Control T and Alt J. So that's gonna actually allow us to straighten this out. I took, a, um, I took a class in college called Graph Theory. It's quite interesting because a lot of graph theory concepts are highly tied into 3D. So it's very interesting to me. But that's just where I'll start probably nerding out. So, um, And there was a concept just like that, one-to-one -one correspondence with um, pieces like that. It's quite interesting how 3D software works behind the scenes. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to all these pieces that I can straighten out. I have a video on this on my channel somewhere. Um, I'm not going to worry about quadrifying those. Some of these might just be overkill, you might not need to worry about, so, but just try to get the ones you can, get it as straight as possible. This one here, and they all have to be quads, remember that, or it won't work. Get that one there. This one should be okay. And some of these might not work, and that's fine, we're going to find out uh, soon enough. I'm going to leave that one alone. And the more you do this, the more we kind of identify like which ones are going to work out well for straightening and which ones aren't. Um, so I just kind of arbitrarily choose these because I can kind of see which ones will work, which ones won't. These won't work because these are technically, I guess I can connect that up and split it, but uh, can't be bothered. Um, that one's good. I don't know if that one will straighten. I don't know if there's a seam to help that. Interesting, these right here are also, we can take care of those in a second, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and um, two grid by shape, and you're going to see some of these kind of messed up. So let's see. 
Sometimes you just have to do it again and it ends up working. I don't know why. I think it's a bug. But yeah, some of these just aren't working. Let's try shift Ling that one. This one here doesn't seem to be working, so usually I just deselect those. But sometimes they just like, I think it's the add-on just kind of bugging. This one looks good. These are all straight. Yep, so that one looks good. I also missed this one. You can straighten them out one by one as well if you really want to. Okay, see what I mean? Like that one worked on the second try. I don't know what the deal is. If anyone knows how to fix that, let me know. Um, these two right here, we can quadrify. So let's zoom in and figure out where those are. Okay, right here. So I missed these. So what we're going to do is just Control T, Alt J, and turn this off. Straighten them. Looks good. So what this is going to allow us to do is pack all this stuff very, very nicely. But for more, sometimes we have additional rings that we can easily like um, drop a seam on to split, like right here, for example. Just quickly put a seam, not going to worry too much about it, but like this one. Uh, let's turn that off. Straightens out very nicely, and that's kind of the goal with all these more angular ones, is to just straighten them out. It's kind of like, um, you know, imagine packing a suitcase. If you try to tighten everything up in a nice, straight, linear fashion, it's going to pack in there better. And that's kind of what I'm doing here, um, just finding all those areas. And you have to be careful because sometimes you don't, there's certain islands you might not want to straighten out. But in these cases, I know these weird Fibonacci things um, are from those cylinders we had before. So I don't want to stress too much about those. But most of these, like for example, when I zoom in, I mean, you're going to see it just straightens out nicely when I go in here. So pretty cool. Takes some time, I know, but it's worth it. Just gonna grab all these as well. Turn this off. I guess I could just turn on the whole thing. This one could be straightened a bit. Actually, let's see what this one corresponds to. Yeah, right there. So you can see that one straightened a bit nicer. So it's angular. And then when I actually straighten that one, a lot straighter. So really clean. And this is just going to pack a lot cleaner, as you'll see in a second. But let me just make sure I got as much as I could. Okay, we got one right here I missed. A few right here. Looks good. This one, that one actually has a weird stray vertex in there. Maybe I could fix that real quick. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. It's fine. And now we just have a few more, nothing crazy. You can go here and grab these, and then maybe like this one. I don't think there's too many more. We have like these two. A few other little ones down here, right? But other than that, I think we got like just about everything, right? Just a few here. And um, one here, one here, one here, and I think that should be fine. So we'll go ahead, just grab all those two grid by shape. Some of these going crazy. In those cases, you can also just try doing them a bit more individually. See, and just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Don't know what the deal is. But just keep trying it, eventually you'll get it. I'd rather have the add-on than not have it, you know. That looks good. And now what we're going to do is use UV Pack Master to pack everything. And you're going to see just the overall resolution and the pack results going to be a lot cleaner when we do this. So I think UV Pack Master 3 is out currently. I'm still using 2. It's like the same stuff. Um, probably just a better algorithm, but this one's still very good. I'm going to normalize the islands. That'll make sure the um, island scale is nice and even. Basically the same thing as the average island scale feature. Keeps the checkers the same size. And then heuristic, I like to use heuristic and just set it to 10 seconds. So it just searches through to find the best result. And after 10 seconds, it stops. And um, there's a few other features in here, but we don't need them right now. So let's go ahead and pack this and just kind of see. That's a really, really clean result. See that? This is why we use Packmaster. And listen, guys, had we not straightened out those islands, let me show you. We would have gotten a result kind of like this. 
And it's not terrible. We have a lot of these islands kind of bending around that could have otherwise been straightened. And that's why I just always tell people, you know, straighten out those islands because it's going to pack a lot cleaner. It's a pretty damn good result. Um, yeah, I think that's good enough. So just look at the difference in the overall resolution. So here's the before, here's the after. We like close to doubled that, I'd say. Really, really clean. I guess I could check the text density or whatever, but um, yeah, really, really clean result. Now I'm sure there's a few areas that might be bending a little bit, like perhaps down here, and I could always go back in and just kind of drop a seam and fix that if I wanted to, but you kind of have to pick your battles and figure out like which areas are worth fixing, which are like decent enough. Also, had I, you know, removed certain faces that we didn't need, we could have saved even more space that way. But that's just, um, that would have gotten into the whole decimation process and optimizing. And like I said, this wasn't necessarily something I was going to use for a game asset. But there were additional ways to remove geometry we can't see, just to kind of optimize that UV space a bit more. But I doubt it would have been anything super significant. You can grab our new game asset course if you kind of want to see that whole process. But, um, yeah. Let's see, and there's also some other things I like to do sometimes. I like to take areas that aren't as like noticeable or as important, and you can always scale down the resolution in those specific areas and kind of optimize the more important areas a bit more. But like, there's so many different workflows and opportunities you can take, but this is like the general workflow, and we have a really clean unwrap here, and this would be ready to be dropped into, you know, Substance Painter and Textured. You just have to make sure you have a triangulate modifier on everything. So pretty clean result. I definitely like how this looks. Um, if you guys want me to build on this and show some more advanced techniques, maybe optimizing it, maybe um, optimizing the UV space a bit more, perhaps um, making this into a game asset and optimizing it that way. I can do so many different things with this model. If you guys would like to see a tutorial on that, let me know. Just drop a comment below. I'd be happy to make a follow up to this, but for now, I just wanted to show you the general workflow and the general result you're going to get just following this strategy. In 99% of the time, you're going to get a very, very clean result like this, which is pretty much good to go in any sort of texturing software. So yeah, let me know if you want a follow-up video, maybe making this into a game asset or something like that and optimizing the UV space a bit more. I'd be happy to make one, but for now, hope this video is helpful. Hope it gave you some more ideas and kind of gave you some insight into my workflow. So. Thanks a bunch. If you like the video, drop me a thumbs up. Subscribe really helps me out and I'll see you in the next one.